Welcome to the quiz night down on the farm. Can everybody see that? Just nod if you can see it. Excellent. So we're going to move on to the next page. And it's general knowledge. And the first five questions are... Okay, what do they eat grass and plants? Number two, Katy Perry says, shares her surname with a type of sparkling cider made from which fruit? Three, in the UK, which fish is the most popular for farming salmon? Four, which PC game heroine shares her name with a style of farming, small scale food and meat production, particular to the Scottish Highlands? And five, who was the first American in space? And let's see if I can get the timer to go. Right, let's see if that goes. So we've got four and a half minutes. Yeah, don't forget to send your answers to the answer man.
if not this night's best in the West. Okay, people, you should be sending your answers to the answer chat. And he'll let me know when to move on to the answers. And hopefully we'll have a look at the scores after round three, five, seven, and nine, just to keep you up to date. Good to go, Jim. Well, that was quick. Well done. Everybody's getting the hang of it now. Good, good. Okay, let's see if we can move on. That's us the next page. And here we go. So, what name is given to animals that eat grass and plants as a hair before? Katie Perry says her son named with a type of sparkling cider made from which fruit is pears. In the UK, which fish is the most popular for farming is salmon. The PC game heroine was Laura Croft. And the first American in space was Alan Shepard. Okay, as I say, we'll uh, show you your scores after round three, and you can see how you're all doing. In the meantime, we'll move on to round two. Round two is all on TV farming, stuff you've seen on the TV, more than day, and probably a days gone by. And the uh, five questions are. Which farming sitcom is a spin-off from Only Fools and Horses? TV farmer Jimmy Doherty presents which topical consumer show about food? Three, which Scottish TV show deals with farming issues and is hosted by Dougie Vipond and guest chef Nick Nairn? Four, which BBC TV programme is presented by Anita Rani and Adam Henson, amongst others? And from 1972 until 1989, this soap had farm in its title. And let's get the timer going. And we're off.
Okay, people, you should now be thinking about putting your answers in, please. Answers in, thank you. I was doing my answers, Derek. We're getting a few in. Yeah, I think I mucked up the timer there, so I think we're under four minutes. The timer didn't work that time. <laughs> I said quite them all. Quite them all then. Super duper. Right then. Moving on. Here are the answers. The answers there were uh, only fills the horse to spin off his green green grass. TV farmer Jimmy Doherty prevents food unwrapped. Scottish TV show that's got Dougie Vipond and Chef Nick Nairn is Landward. The TV programme presented by Anita Rani and Adam Henson is Country File. And the TV programme was Emmerdale, which was previously Emmerdale Farm. And of course, the picture in the background is, of course, the Taj Mahal for anybody who was asking. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next round. And after that, round three, uh, Derek will fire up your scores. And we'll see how we're doing after round three. So round three is don't be sheepish. And how much do we know about these friendly young furry things? Okay, moving on. Here are the questions. Which country has the most sheep in the world? Two, the most primitive breed of sheep in Europe lives on St. Kilda. What is this breed called? Three, what's the name for the refined wool grease used in many cosmetic products? Four, what is the name of the farm where we meet cartoon Sean the sheep? And this breed of sheep has the finest fleece and originated in Spain. What breed is it? And the timer's on.
if not this night's best in the West. Okay, folks, you should be getting your answers in. Two the answers, chat now, please. Okay, Jim. Is that everybody in? Roger, yep. Roger. Okay, here are the answers. Answers there. Uh, which country has the most sheep in the world is Australia. The primitive sheep on St Kilda is Soy sheep. The name for the refined wool grease is Lanolin. The name of the farm where Sean the sheep is is Mossy Bottom Farm. And the breed of sheep with the finest fleece is Merino. And I'll let Derek put up the scores after round three. I'll take a wee note of them as well. Well, let me just take a wee note on that. Well, then I'll need to move you to the side of it. Don't take it away this night till I get it all sorted. Oh, lots of 11s. Table 11. Out in the lead with 14 so far. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now. Right. It's all looking pretty tight, pretty close. Uh, let's go back to... Let's go back to... Screen share. Okay, you should now be seeing the previous round. Let me move on now to round four. And it's all about cheese. You know, farmers are always diver diversifying. So they do a lot of cheese now. And here are the questions. Number one, which cheese is the most popular 
in the UK. To which cheese would you normally sprinkle over pasta? Three, which Welsh cheese should you treat with extreme caution? Four, can Stilton cheese be produced only in the town of Stilton? And five, the term cheese eating surrender monkeys was made famous by which cartoon character? Number one, which cheese is the most popular in the UK? Two, which cheese would you normally sprinkle over pasta? Three, which Welsh cheese should you treat with extreme caution? Four, can Stilton cheese be produced only in the town of Stilton? Five, the term cheese eating surrender monkeys was made famous by which cartoon character? And we're going to start up the timer now.
best in the West. Okay, you should be get your answers in through the answer chat, please, Daniel. Hi. All answers are in, John. Oh, then. Oh, excellent. All right. Let's move on then. Let's see if I've got the answers here. Okay, the most popular cheese in the UK is still cheddar. The cheese you normally sprinkle over pasta is parmesan. The well cheese you should treat with extreme caution is carefully. Use it very carefully. Can Stilton cheese be produced only in Stilton? No, it cannot be produced in the village of Stilton because it lies in Cambridge, which is now outside the area of protected designation of origin. Well, there you go. <laughs> And the term cheese eating send the monkeys was groundskeeper Willie from the Simpsons. Okay, the next round is a picture round. You're going to see 13 pictures. So I know some of you have got to pass it on and do other stuff. So I'm going to give you 10 minutes to work on the picture round. Just don't forget to send your answer straight to the answer chap. Don't send them to me. And here are the pictures. So I'll give you 10 minutes on that one. You have to tell me where all the different, or what are all the different uh, letters are from. Right. Can go and make a cup of coffee then while we're all waiting. All right, good luck, everybody.
Okay, people, uh, about two minutes to go around that. Two minutes to go. Okay, can you start getting answers through to the answer chat, please? Thank you. Okay, answer chat. Is that everybody in? Yeah. No, we're all getting better and better every month at this. Very good. Like to hope. But uh, once we see the answers, give you a few seconds to see the answers, then we'll ask the answer chat to put up your scores. And here we go. The answers are they were South Park, Tenants, Adobe, Subway. Holiday Inn, Oasis, Motorhead, Hampton, and finally the Safeway Supermarket. Okay, and um, we'll let Derek put up the scores. I'll take a wee note of them, and that'll be your half time scores.
let me just get my last one there. 25. Okay, looks like we have a new leader. Uh, table one is now in the lead. Okay, we're going to move on to round, round six. Let me just get the screen back up again. Okay, here we go. And it's all about farming tools and machinery. Always a popular round. And uh, here we go. Okay, what name is given to the three pronged fork for lifting hay? To the constellation of Ursa Major is also known as this. Three, which farming machine simultaneously cuts, threshes, and cleans the sands and crop of grain? Four, what is the semi circular piece of equipment used to measure angles and geometry? And five, and seven people invented which piece of farming equipment? So, one, what name is given to the three pronged fork or lift the Two, the constellation of Ursa Major is also known as this. Three, which farming machine simultaneously cuts, fleshes, and cleans a standing crop of grain? Four, what is the semi-circular piece of equipment used to measure angles and geometry? And five and 1701, Jethro Tull invented which piece of farming equipment? And the timer is running. In fact, we have a joint leader. This is if table one and table six are all in 26, with uh, table 11 hard on their heels with 25.
if not Wiz Knight's best in the West. Okay, folks, let's get your answers in, please. All in, Jim. That was quick. Good up. Okay, let's move on then. The answer's there. The three-pronged fork is a pitchfork. Also major is also known as the plough. The farming machine is a combine harvester. The semi-circular piece of equipment used to measure angles is a protractor. And Jethro Tull invented the seed drill. So after round seven, we'll throw your scores up and we'll see if we've got any changes in the leadership. Okay, let's fire on to round seven. And this is all about cereals. Five questions on cereals. And uh, here we go. From 1981 until 2007, which famous person appeared in shredded wheat adverts? Two, what is an Italian dish made of corn? Three, which breakfast food box has a religious figure on the front panel? Four, this cereal sounds like a complex system of paths or tunnels in which it is easy to get lost. Five, which breakfast cereal is normally advertised on TV with a woman in red clothing? Okay, we're just going to start up the timer now, and uh, we're off. So, from 1981 to 2007, which famous person appeared in the shredded wheat adverts? Two, what is an Italian dish made of corn? I'm only accepting the answer I have. Three, which breakfast food box has a religious figure on the front panel? Four, this cereal sounds like a complex system of paths or tunnels in which it is easy to get lost. And five, which breakfast cereal is normally advertised on TV with a woman in red clothing?
Knock Quiz Nights, best in the West. Okay, you should have had plenty of time to get your answers in. Getting them to the answer chat. Oh, right, excellent. Thank you. Too easy. Uh, 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 I took pity on them this time. <laughs> okay, the answer's there. Uh, the shredded wheat, famous person was Ian Botham. The Italian dish is polenta. The breakfast food box with religious figures, Quaker oats. The complex system of paths is a maze. And the cereal is special key. Okay, that's round seven. I'll let Derek put up the latest scores. Well, it's even closer. Well, it's looking like a good quiz tonight. Could be anybody winning this one. So who have we got in the lead now? Looks like tables at one. Uh, one and six are still neck and neck. Okay, let's go back to the quiz. Okay, it's your second picture round. Just a basically who am I? I will give you an extra few minutes on this one. I know you've got to pass it around your teams. And uh, here they are. Okay, unfortunately, the Sloans couldn't take part this evening, but they are on YouTube. So hello to Kieran, Nathan, Lewis, Aidan, and Callum. Don't forget, boys, early to bed. No school in the morning. Behave. Where's my finger going? There. Okay, as you can see, the picture quiz is themed.
Okay, people, you should uh, your answers into the answer chat by now. Thank you.
Okay, we're nearly all in. Oh, that was well then. Okay. Let's move on to the answers then. Bum, 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 bum. And here are the answers. Okay, it was Gareth Bale, Ben Shepherd, Sally Field, Carol Barnes, Sandra Bullock, Captain Oates, Claire Goose, Drake, Jennifer Metcalf, and Ricky Lambert. Okay, we'll get your scores after the next round. Okay, you're going to make... Okay, the next round is all about farming mushrooms. And five questions on that. Here we go. What caused the mushroom cloud to form over a bikini atoll in 1954? Two of which mushroom has the same name as a shellfish? Three of which mushroom can be used as a fastener? For how many mushrooms are there on a bar billiards table? And five, which little blue characters live in mushroom houses? Here, what caused a mushroom cloud to form over a bikini atoll in 1954? Which mushroom has the same name as a shellfish? Three of which mushroom can be used as a fastener? Four, how many mushrooms are there on a bar billiards table? I'm only accepting the answer I have. Five, which little blue cartoon characters live in mushroom houses? And the timer is running.
best in the West. Okay, let's get those answers in to the answer chat. Answers in, Jim. Right, that's cool. Um, we need to get a barbell yeah. table at the club when it opens up. No one seems what? to know. We need a barbell barbell table down at the club. <laughs> no seems to know. Well, that's why I put it in. And what the mushroom cloud is a nuclear explosion. A mushroom, the same as a shellfish, is an oyster mushroom, which mushroom can be used as a fastener, would be the button mushroom. And the bar is table, there are four mushrooms. And the little blue cartoon characters that live in mushroom houses are the Smurfs. So that is nine. So we will now put up the scores before we go into the Jeopardy round. Please take a note of your scores. You'll need to know for the Jeopardy round. I'll get Derek to put the scores up. Right, so here we go. One, two. Table six is 47. Table three. Okay, looks like we have a new leaders. Table three are in the lead by a single point. With uh, table six a single point behind them. So it's all to play for in the final round. Uh, you're all looking very smiley now. Let's see what it's like when you see the next lot of questions. So. Let me sort things out. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, for some teams, this is death or glory. And for other teams, a bit squeaky. Okay, let's move on. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, the gentleman again is a slightly unfirming. It's three points for a correct answer. Mainly three for an incorrect answer. No answer, then there's no penalty. So there's a possible 15 points available here. Let's see if you're brave enough to catch up. And uh, here we go. Number one, all 48 extras died within a year of appearing in which 1995 Oscar nominated film? Two. What is the name of the heritage island one mile to the south of the Isle of Man? Three, which company had a Highland cow in its packaging? Four, from which animal do we get cashmere wool? And once again, I'm only accepting the answer I have. And five, Thomas Dufresne wrote the first version of Old MacDonald's Farm in which century? One, all four to eight extras died within a year of appearing in which 1995 Oscar nominated film? Two, what's the name of the heritage island one mile to the south of the Isle of Man? Three, which company had a Highland cow on its packaging? Four, from which animal do we get cashmere wool? And five, Thomas Dufresne wrote the first version of Old MacDonald's Farm in which century? And here we go, the timer is running. Okay, what we'll do at the end, rather than put the scores up, we'll just get, I'll ask uh, Derek to read the scores and the final scores out. And it's a little bit more exciting. And uh, if we do have a tie, I have a tiebreaker question. So there's only a couple of points in it. Quite a few teams on 44, they might want to take a wee chance and answer all the questions. Tables on 48 and 47. Someone's got
not this night's best in the West. Okay, it's time to get your answers in, folks. See who's been brave and who hasn't. Once we are show you the answers, then I'll turn it over to Derek to do, to do the scores. You just read them out rather than put them up. It's a bit more exciting that way. We don't know who it is till the end. How are we doing with the answers? Are they all coming in? Yep. Is that everybody in there? Right. Uh, let me just double check. Right, okay. I don't want to see the answers until you're absolutely ready. I think that's them all. Okay, that's fine. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, then let's move on to let's move on to the answers. Boom. Okay, the forty extras that died were all pigs. They were in Babe. The name of the heritage island is the Calf of Man. The Highland Cow was on McGowan's Highland Toffee. From which animal do we get Cashmere Will? I we just accepted goat. If you had the other two, that was good knowledge, but uh, what the goat was what we were looking for. Uh, Thomas DeFray wrote the first version of Old MacDonald's Farm in 1702, which is the 18th century. How many people were brave enough to answer that question? Okay. And I'll turn it over to the answer man, and he can give us the scores. Okay. In that round, table one scored three for 47. Table two scored 12 for 54. Scored nine for 42. Table five scored six for 48. Table seven scored nine for 53. Table eight scored three for 47. Table nine, six for 50. Table 10, 3 for 45. Table 11, 9 for 53. And coming into that round, table 3 and table 6 were out in front. Table 6 got 9 for 56. And table 3 scored 12 to win with 60. Okay, well done, peeps. Okay, I want to do the usual. Put your hands together for the hardest working man of the evening. Well done, Derek. <laughs> thank you very much. And of course, thank you very much all well done, for, uh, for taking part. I hope you had a wee bit of fun tonight. Uh, I think we are back again on... I think we're back again. Two weeks' time. Thanks, Jim. Okay, Jim. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye. 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 Bye.